you edit your your comments in the chat? I don't know if you can. I didn't mean to put a question mark there. It, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely like. Up My some problem stuff. is I only have a shower here. Okay. Yeah, I know. But I, I hear from people who would like, like to. Have you ever heard of Doctor Teal? It's a. Uh -huh. Well, he's got a lavender sleep and yes, he like does. a lotion, and I put that on with a shower, yeah. and that really helps. Mm -hmm. But he has all never, different types. I never used it in the shower. That's good to know. I'll have to, let me go get it because it's a certain I, one of those. And I don't remember which okay. one. Okay, that would be great. Of course, great. it's in my shower. Hi, Donna. We're happy to have you here. Hi, everyone. Hello. Happy you're here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to see you all. Napping. I like that answer. I'm all for a good nap. <laughs> and I like Donna's answer, breathing in, breathing out, mindfully. That's a good one. You're part cat, Stephanie. Oh. <laughs> I had a beautiful nap yesterday afternoon. It was one of those that just made you feel so good. <laughs> when you can get a good nap, it's, it's really quite a tonic. Yes, it I really can't nap night. very very often anymore. I used to be a good napper, but I got older. That went away. <laughs> okay, it's got a pump. Us. So oh, it has a pump. Okay. I've seen that, yeah, but I never thought about using Dr. it in the Teal's shower. Ultra. Oh, that's a great idea. Most body wash, and it's called Soothe and Sleep with the I will Lavender. I will recommend that to my clients. Oh, it's really wonderful. Tub or can't get into a tub. That's great. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're a few minutes after. So I want to welcome you back to week four. We're already at the end of February. Where did the month go? Crazy. But I I am so excited that you've stuck in with us for the four weeks, whether you're here with us live or on the recording. This is our mindfulness and movement for women with chronic illness. And um, just so excited to be with you. I am Stephanie Luares, um, body positive personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist. And we have Dr. Robin Faff. And I'm a, a health and wellness coach for women with fibromyalgia, especially women 50 and older. And we're going to start with some mindfulness. Yes. Yes, we are. Um, I thought today that we would talk about mindful self-compassion. It's something that I talk about often with my clients that are inside my coaching programs. And what I like about self-compassion is that it's contrasted with self-esteem and the concept of self-compassion is very researched based by a professor named Kristen Neff at, <clears throat> out of the University of Texas in Austin and she's found that self-esteem is something that you can kind of run yourself in circles chasing that it's kind of like a, trying to figure out where you are on a hierarchy. There's always somebody better than you. There's always somebody worse off than you are. It doesn't, it hasn't proven to actually improve measures of health and well-being. In contrast, self-compassion has shown to be um, a proven way to build inner strength, to accept yourself and to thrive. And um, there's a lot that can be said by, about self-compassion. I just want to focus on a few things today. Some people are um, have an attitude towards their body, especially if they have chronic illness, that is, um, I guess to, to say it nicely, um, pretty negative. Some of us have a negative attitude towards our body for any number of reasons, 
but um, a mentor of mine once said, if you treat your body like a, a mule, um, yelling at it and prodding it along and um, criticizing it, your body is not going to perform very well. In fact, using self-criticism towards our bodies is a pretty sure way of not getting to where we want to be. Um, that harsh self-talk might include saying things like, what is the matter with me? Or what is the matter with you? Or why can't you just get up and do it? Everybody else is doing it. My favorite is, what is your problem? <laughs> even though I know very well what my actual problem is. Um, I think all of us might feel that way towards our bodies from time to time. And so it's really worthwhile cultivating another set of skills, another approach to our body, especially when we're maybe in a flare, not feeling very well at all. And that's to speak to our body with loving kindness phrases. I'm going to do a little exercise in a moment to, to practice just that. Um, a loving kindness phrase might be, um, may I be peaceful. And if we can identify two or three or four loving kindness phrases that become part of our natural self-talk, then we can use those when we're in a flare or when we're feeling bad or just as part of meditation. And it can help us, these self-compassion phrases can help ground us in the present moment and help us to be more mindful. Um, I, was, I had a pretty hectic week last week and um, I was feeling pretty frazzled this morning. So I decided to mindfully fold the laundry which, which is a task that I don't mind doing. I know it's not everyone's favorite task, but I'd rather fold laundry any day versus say unloading the dishwasher. So I just allowed myself to kind of calm and come into my center and fold the laundry and um, gave myself what I needed. And that's really a valuable question to ask yourself if you find that you're getting in a tangle with your own feelings towards your body, you can just say in the moment, what, what do I need? What would help? And I sort of did a quick survey of all of the tasks that could command my attention and decided it's me and the laundry basket over here in a quiet space, folding, doing something useful, doing something quiet, doing something mindful. So um, you can think of loving kindness statements as more like blessings versus affirmations. Affirmations sometimes are maybe more goal oriented than um, loving kindness blessings. So um, I think I've said everything that I wanted to say about that. So let's practice. Um, what we're gonna do is just a short little meditation like we've done the previous three weeks. And I'll just walk you through it. Um, and then I'll, I will be giving you some examples of um, loving kindness statements that you could incorporate in your own routine. But I also want you to kind of listen within and find the language that is your voice that speaks to you, the things that resonate with you. So let's um, assume our quiet, mindful meditation pose. If you can reach the floor with your feet, it's always good to um, straighten your spine and take a couple breaths in and out, in through the nose and out slowly through your mouth and just kind of get oriented here. I'll let you take a couple more breaths. And just, just quietly be with your breath, just not trying to 
make the breath do anything in particular, just breathe naturally like you normally would. And if you want to, you can put your hand over your heart um, or your tummy or your shoulder or anywhere. And you don't have to put your hand in any particular place. But just feel your body breathe, bringing in that air, that oxygen, and then just letting it go gently. I'm going to give you a quiet moment here to ask your body, what do I need right now? What, what do you need, dear body? What do you need? And I'm just going to give you some examples of loving kindness phrases. And if it resonates with you, that's great. And if it doesn't, just let it go on by. But here's some examples of things you could say to yourself in a very loving way. May I be kind to myself. May I begin to be kind to myself. May I know that I belong. May I live in peace. May I know that I am loved. May I rest in love. And you can take a, another breath or two to bring this little short meditation time to a close. And if you came up with any statements or phrases that resonate, you can take a moment to write them down or share them in the chat. And I'll give you just a moment to come back into our Zoom room together. So I noticed that a couple of you were writing down phrases and can use them for reference later. And I think now is a time where we're ready to segue into some movement, Miss Stephanie. Yes. And I Thank love you, I love this idea of self-compassion as we move into movement today. Um you know, one of these things that, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny that, um, you know, we talk about this idea of self-compassion. This is something that I've been focusing on a lot lately in, in my own life and something that I, I really need, need to, some of those, that word power that we have. Self-compassion is something that I'm really focusing on in my own life because it's so attached to the judgment that we have and um, around our ability, what we can do, what we feel like we can't do, what, what, we, what we're able to do one day and, and aren't, aren't able to do another day. And it, it, it wraps up into our worth and you know, so much. And we, we just, we get caught up in these messages that we tell ourselves. And I love how all of these statements were, you know, may I be, may I feel, um, a lot of the, a lot of these very similar statements are that, that I use, uh, in my practice are to today, I'm willing to practice what, whatever that might be. That's, 
that's kind of the, the structure of, of the practice that I'm working on. You know, today I'm willing to practice giving myself the space to, to, to give myself the grace, to be quiet and still, to, to give myself permission to rest. And, and so this, this is such a wonderful conversation as we segue into our last section of movement where we're looking at our lower body. And so the exercises that I'm going to be demonstrating today can either be done standing or laying down, which is kind of funny because we just had a conversation about all of our wonderful mattresses. So when you talk about doing movement laying down, you do want to likely be either on the floor if you're comfortable getting up off the floor. I don't want you to get down on the floor if you are not comfortable getting up off the floor. <laughs> so these exercises are things you can do in bed. The, these are great things that you can do in bed. If you have a wide couch that, that you're able to lay on, that is a stable surface. When we talk about doing exercises laying down, the idea is having a flat, stable surface. And the reason why these exercises we're not doing in a chair today is because of knee mobility, because in some of the exercises, it's, it can be easy to move the knee out of its natural range of motion. And we don't want to cause anything that's going to cause injury, discomfort, or pain. So we do these either standing or laying down because then we're moving in the, in the, the legs, natural range of motion without bringing the knees into an awkward position that's gonna cause strain or pain. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much demonstrate everything laying down on the therapy table because it's pretty easy to translate what those would be standing up and what we think about when we're doing any of these exercises standing up is what we've talked about the last several weeks that we're having that really good postural alignment where our, our feet are lined up with our hips. We've got that good spinal alignment. Our shoulders are back. So just kind of everything stacked on top of each other. And if you are standing, having something to brace yourself on. So having that sturdy chair, your, your hands up against the wall, hanging onto a railing, something that you're, you have to have balance so that you, you, you're not gonna lose your balance just by standing in the middle of the room because you are moving one leg is off the ground and so your weight is balanced on one foot. So the exercises that I am going to demonstrate, I'm going to show you laying down, but you can do them just the same standing up. So and move my camera here. So the first thing that you're gonna do is when you're laying down in bed or on the couch or even on the floor, is you just wanna be in a very neutral position. You want your body to be very relaxed. And so if you need to put a pillow under your head, under your back and shoulders, under your neck, under your low back, under your hips, under your knees, wherever you need to put that extra support to be comfortable, it's okay to do that. You don't have to be completely flat. If you need something for support, go ahead and put those pillows so you feel supported and comfortable. But the very first exercise that we're gonna do is just a leg lift. And so we're lifting our leg up with our foot flexed, and so if you're standing, you're just gonna bring that leg up as far as that range of motion is comfortable. So it might only be just a little bit off the ground. 
whatever that looks like for you. So it might be up, like it almost like a kick, or it might be just a little bit down. It might be just a little bit off, off the ground. So however far that feels for you. And again, we do those five to 10 repetitions on each side. So whatever feels good for you. And then from there, we're gonna do a side, a side leg lift. So then all we do is we slide the leg out and back, out and back. And again, it can be a very small movement where we just lift the leg and slide out, or it can be a very big movement depending on how tight your hips are and how loose those muscles are. It can be a bigger movement or it can be a very small movement. And you know, do about five to 10 on each side and then you just switch to the other leg. And then depending on, again, your comfort level and what you're comfortable doing and how you're comfortable laying, you're gonna move now to your sides because we change the intensity based on the angle that we move our leg. So if you're comfortable to be able to move on your side, you could either come up on your elbow or you can lay down on your side with your arm down, bring your arm up, however that's comfortable. But we're gonna do that same side leg lift, but this time we're gonna bring our leg up because instead of bringing it out to the side, by bringing it up, we're putting a little bit more resistance on it and it's, it's working a few different muscles and we're getting a little bit more intense of a stretch in there. And then again, you roll over and lift the other leg. Now we're gonna tuck this leg behind. So your top leg just bends behind you a little bit. We're still laying on our side. Now this, this leg that's on the bottom, this is a very small movement that we're gonna do. And we're gonna just lift this leg and bring it back down. Lift that, lift that inside leg and bring it back down. And you really feel this on the inside of those legs. You're gonna bring it up and back down. And then you do that again on the other side. And then this last one, you're gonna, if it's comfortable for you to lay on your stomach, and again, you can outstretch your arms and lay completely down, or you can be up on your elbows. And then we're just gonna bring those legs up and just do one at a time. And just bring that leg back. And again, as far as that range of motion is comfortable, and then you just switch and do it on the other side. And you just go straight up in the air and back down. And then while you're on your face down as well, you're also going to do that side leg out to the side as well. You're just going to slide out and in again. Because again, from that different angle, we're working muscles a little bit differently. So we're just sliding that leg out and back in. And you can do that just as far as is comfortable. And 
And so as we think about those leg exercises, we pretty much moved our legs 360 degrees around, moving our body all the way around as we laid down or if we were standing up. Are there any questions on that? Did you feel any, any difference in how the legs moved? Any questions on, on how that felt or any, any way to make that more challenging or any difficulty? Certain positions are tighter than others. Yes. Yes, you definitely discover which muscles in your low back, in your hips, especially um, in your glutes are extremely tight. Well, that and that's cool. why sometimes it's just a small movement. Sometimes we're able to, to really swing those legs out. But it's a re all of those are really good exercises to increase that range of motion and especially in the hips and start to get a greater range of motion without a lot of exertion. You know, because it is something that, you know, I can spend five minutes and do it in bed. Other questions, comments? I love that, Stephanie. Um, over the weekend, I felt lower back tightness that I usually don't feel. And I do a lot of sitting and computer work. And uh, usually I can just, you know, wiggle it off and it'll be fine. And this weekend was different. And I was, I kept doing like forward folds or ragdoll and it didn't occur to me to move my legs. Mm -hmm. But now when I move my legs, I kind of felt it there. And the more I did, the more it was releasing. That's excellent. I just had somebody else have that observation this morning as well, that they, that they were having a lot of tightness from sitting. And once they started moving their legs, they, they felt that back release. Yeah. These are great exercises, Stephanie. We're going to both of us summarize the, the exercises and the mindfulness strategies that we used over the past four weeks and email that out tomorrow, I guess. Yes, in addition to getting the links to the recording for today and the past classes, we're gonna send you a PDF resource guide that'll have all the exercises, the tips and things, the mindfulness. So you'll kind of have a one-stop resource for everything that we've gone over so that you don't feel like you have to memorize everything that we've gone through. You'll have a quick, nice reference guide. Great. That's great. Well, we want to thank you for hanging in there with us. This has been a wonderful time that um, Dr. Robin Pfaff and I have had with you the last several weeks. This has been kind of an experiment for us in working together and sharing this time and space with you and just sharing our expertise, the things that we love and sharing it with the world. And if there's any way that either of us can be a further assistance, answer any more questions or concerns, we are more than happy to be a resource for you and, and just, you know, help you along on the journey. That's, that's what we're here for. Yes. And if you aren't already on our newsletter lists, you can um, ask to be put on my newsletter list as well as Stephanie's newsletter list so that we can keep in touch with you. And I see the thank yous in the chat room. Appreciate that. And thanks for being here, ladies. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.